there. I'm Dennis Province from the IDEA National Resource for Quantitative Proteomics, and I want to spend some time with you today talking about the fundamentals of proteomics, uh, which is also called protein mass spectrometry. Uh, this is a, a tough topic to talk about, but it's a very exciting one. It's tough because it requires so many different types of uh, of knowledge um, bases to be able to come and we need to know some biology we need to know some basic chemistry some biochemistry some data science some physics um, so there's a lot of things that we have to hit on so we're going to try to start today by talking about the rationale behind proteomics why do we do it what's the point of it so our goal we're going to start at the goal here is to identify the greatest number of proteins and to quantify those proteins that we've identified. So we can start with different sample types like cell culture, uh, tissue samples, uh, 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 tissue that's been embedded onto a slide uh, for like pathology reasons, or even uh, serum or plasma samples. And what we would do is all of those different types of biological samples are all have the same thing in common in that there are cells, living cells, um, that all have the same uh, four basic biological molecules in that you have lipids and you have proteins and you have uh, DNA uh, or genetic material and you have carbohydrates. And our goal is, is to be able to have some sort of sample prep flow that can disrupt those cells and isolate the proteins out of each particular sample uh, type that we have. And then once we get those proteins, we would then take it through a process of uh, quantifying those proteins for our experiment. We'll talk more about that later, but, but more specifically, we take those proteins, which are really just long chains of amino acids all linked together through an amide bond, and we would, so we would specifically cleave those down into peptides. Now, peptides are just smaller amino acid chains, somewhere between about five or six amino acids up to about 25 is what we're shooting for. Amino acids all linked in a row. And we want to then take those peptides and we want to be able to introduce them into a mass spectrometer. Now, we're gonna do some separation on the front end. We'll talk more about the instrumentation and all of that uh, at a later video. But for right now, we're just gonna take those peptides in a in a liquid, they're gonna be dissolved in a liquid. And we are going to introduce them into the mass spectrometer and we're gonna get two different pieces of information. We're gonna get what's called the MS1 spectra where we get uh, information about the individual peptide themselves. Each one individually will have a different signal. And then we're gonna isolate each one of those signals which is a particular uh, amino acid. We're gonna hit it with some energy to get what's called the MS2 spectra. Now, the MS2 spectra is fragments of a particular peptide. So the MS2 is really like a fingerprint of each individual peptide. And then once we get those MS2 spectra, we can figure out what the identity is of our peptides. We can do a database search against the possible proteins in the sample. So we actually have a way of knowing what proteins a particular cell can make because we know the genetic information, because we've done uh, um, uh, all that on the front end. And then once we've done that database search, again, the goal is to find the identity of the greatest number of proteins in that sample and to quantify the proteins identified. So what do we know? Well, what we know at this point in time, it's a really exciting time to be alive. Um, in terms of biotechnology because we now have tools that allow us to uh, understand uh, the role of DNA. DNA um, is really just the storage of information um, and genomics is uh, uh, the, the, the study of, of DNA and uh, the DNA is, is redundant. Every cell in your body or every cell in, a, in an organ uh, or in a tissue sample is I can have the same, um, the same DNA. Uh, the DNA in each one of your cells is complete. So even though your lung cell doesn't need every protein um, that your DNA can express, only certain proteins are expressed uh, because a lung cell doesn't need everything. It, it has a different function than say a brain cell or a muscle cell. 
Um, so the DNA is really like an encyclopedia. It contains all of this information and that um, we can get at. And, and since the Human Genome Project was started, we've been able to um, basically uh, figure out what the genetic code is of every organism that we come in contact with, whether that be animals, uh, mammals, uh, bacteria, uh, even virus, we can get all of that information. So we also know that there's information at the RNA level, um, but RNA is, as we found in the last 10 or so years, surprisingly has some function as well. So the RNA uh, can go into uh, the nucleus uh, for a, a eukaryotic cell, and it can actually transcribe some of that information uh, from the DNA and then come back out and make proteins. Now, if you're going to study RNA, we call that transcriptomics, and that is where you're looking at the RNA level information. So if you're looking at just the DNA level information, we call that genomics. If you're looking at the RNA, we call it transcriptomics. And uh, RNA, it's, it's, it's transient. Those things are not as uh, eternal. Like DNA, we try to keep around because that is the original copy, the master recording. And the RNA um, gets pieced together and uh, gets in and out and communicates uh, with uh, and, 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 and is really important in the translation into proteins. Now, the proteins is where we work in proteomics. So you can know information about a cell at the DNA level, at the genomic level, but that doesn't tell you what proteins are actually expressed. Um, and then the, those proteins are what uh, undergo the structural and functional um, work that is undergone in the cell, um, both inside and outside the cell. The proteins are a huge part of it. They also catalyze chemical reactions. And so even though you can know information about a cell um, at the genomic level and the transcriptomics level, you still don't know at the proteomic level unless you measure it. Now, here's what makes proteomics so challenging is that in genomics, you can uh, amplify DNA. You can use instruments that will amplify the DNA so that you can take a small amount of DNA and you can amplify it so there's a large amount so it's easy to get a signal or a read on that. Proteins you cannot amplify at this point. So you have to take cells, break them apart, get the protein out, and be able to analyze it at whatever concentration that it is. And so that makes it really challenging. So again, the goal of proteomics is protein identification. We want to know who came to the party, what proteins are actually being expressed. Uh, we might have some lung tissue, or we might have some brain tissue, or it may be a cell culture, uh, or it may be some serum that uh, we got from a blood sample of a particular patient. And so what we're actually, um, to figure out protein identification, we're asking the question of, did we find unique peptides from that protein? Because remember, we are actually looking at, at, at peptides. And then the protein quantity is how much or how many? How many proteins did we find and how much was each one, uh, did we have of each one of these? And really, we can answer that by how many times did we see each peptide and what was the actual signal of those peptides? Because we have some... Um, dynamic range that we can deal with there. Okay, so the last part of the slideshow is just to talk about the three different types of uh, uh, parts that we have here. We have sample prep workflow. What is the sample prep workflow? So in more detail, we take those biological samples like cells, um, maybe cult cell culture or tissue or serum or something like that, and we want to get the proteins out. And then we want to have a measured amount of protein so that each sample starts with the same amount of protein. And then we want to use biochemistry, specifically, uh, almost exclusively, the, the enzyme trypsin, which will cleave proteins into peptides uh, very reproducible, uh, in a very reproducible way. We'll talk about that uh, in a future video. Data acquisition workflow. So now that we've made those peptides, that's that chemical information. Okay, those peptides, those are uh, those are molecules that we turn into ions by just uh, by, by by changing the pH, by uh, controlling the pH. We can make sure those peptides are charged. That's really important because we're going to use a mass spectrometer to do our analysis, and mass spectrometers are blind to neutral 
molecules. It has to have a charge for a mass spectrometer to be able to uh, move it around inside of its um, system. And so from the, those charged ions, then we can get a spectrum, which will tell us the mass of each peptide. And then we can hit those uh, peptides with energy and it causes it to fragment and we can get the masses of those fragments, um, the spectrum of those fragments, and that's like our fingerprint. And then we have the digital information about the peptides. It tells us the identity and the abundance and we can go on to our data analysis workflow where we take the identity of that and then we do a database search where we go back and take how, maybe 20,000 peptides uh, peptides that we saw in a one hour run and that corresponds to maybe three or four or five thousand proteins that are identified and um, gives us some idea of the abundance and then after that we can do differential analysis and that is the bioinformatics part where you actually look at the control samples versus the treatment which proteins did we actually see in the control which proteins did we see in the treatment how much of that protein did we see in the control and how much of the treatment? And that's where we can start to apply statistics to figure out uh, significance. So another way to look at this path at the IDEA National Resource for Quantitative Proteomics, it sounds like a commercial, we do all three of things. We, have a, we do full sample prep where we take biological information and we get the proteins, convert it to peptides, and then we do the proteomics. We have the mass spectrometers here that will uh, be able to analyze those peptides and be able to give us uh, digital information about those peptides. And then we have the full bioinformatics that can do the differential expression at the back end, where now we have biological information stored in a digital format. And as I mentioned, this requires a blending of biology into chemistry, into biochemistry, into physics, into data science to be able to go all the way from the beginning to the end of a single project. Future topics, uh, it, we're going to talk about uh, the properties of peptides, how a database search works, uh, talk some more specifics on sample prep, and uh, converting chemical information into di digital information.